So I've seen a lot of these articles like this one describing how Mortal Kombat 1's Switch port is just a disaster. Not only does it look like this, but also they have things like Steam pop-ups for achievements still in there because they didn't actually separate out the versions of the game. They just brought the Steam version right to the Switch without really screwing around with it much and so now you still have steam achievements popping up even though there's nothing for it to reference it's just like they didn't check it or test it or anything i guess it's just amazing but perhaps the most viral element of this is just how terrible the game looks on switch compared to the version on other mainstream consoles i mean it is not even close as you can see in this side by side from ign it's like laughably terrible however as we've seen before sometimes people online can exaggerate how bad things are. Such as with The Last of Us Part 1, when that launched on PC, a lot of people had graphical issues like this that they showed off, but then it also turned out that in some cases, people were going into the settings and tweaking it to the Steam Deck quality setting to try and make it look worse when they captured it because it, frankly i mean it's pretty hilarious to see it running like this and there's been other occasions in years past where a game is like getting memed on for being terrible and so people will kind of fudge it a little bit to make it look worse for the clout so i figured you know what let me test it myself how bad is mortal kombat on switch is it as terrible as everybody's making it out to be spoiler alert the answer is yes <laughs> First things first, to understand how the game actually runs on PC, I have it booted up here. This is the Steam version, and this is running on my computer, so it's going to look just about as good as you could expect it to. Everything is maxed out, and if we just go to the basic story mode, start it off, skip the cinematic because we just want to see how the game actually looks. So this now we're in the game. For that to happen, this is how it looks. In no time. Okay, let's see how terribly I do, because I am not a Mortal Kombat player. Oh, yeah. Okay. You know, people were asking me on stream if I was going to be playing Mortal Kombat, and I was like, I'm not opposed to it. I just suck at these games, so I don't know why you'd want me to, to play it, you know? Go for the shins. Oh, the face, too. That'll work. Okay. Didn't even mean to do that. <laughs> I did complete the tutorial before this because I was like, I should at least have some idea of what I'm doing. But as you can see, most of it is just going to be the same kicks over and over again. Okay. I technically won. Okay, and here we are in the second fight. And the reason we're doing this, just so everybody's clear, is so we can compare the exact same fight back to back. Because I don't want to compare things unfairly. I don't think it'll matter that much, but still, trying to be fair. Okay, again, I'll take it on a technicality, totally not button mashing. <laughs> Booyah, Kasha. Okay. Now who's in over his head? Yeah, stupid. So, I mean, even if we're just looking at performance, it still dips occasionally. I mean, it's not running as well as I would have expected, considering this is supposed to be like a competitive game, I would figure it's locked at 60 through and through. But you know what? It's it's workable, I think. So that gives us a little taste of it on the PC. I don't think it runs great, or at least as well as I would have expected, but it's not like totally broken or busted, and it actually graphically looks pretty good. Now let's use the Switch and see what this is like. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> and okay, here we are. In the Switch, ready to go. Um, I have all my favorite games installed, of course. Heavily, heavily recommend Astro Bears. If you've never played Astro Bears, I'm gonna tell you what, you need to do it. Like, who cares about Mario Party and Smash Bros? Astro Bears is where it's at. I played this with a bunch of buddies at a bachelor party, like, a month ago or something, and it was the most fun we had all weekend. Seriously, Astro Bears. It's like Snake, but in 3D. It's so stupid, but it's good fun. What were we talking about? Oh, Mortal Kombat. That's right. Okay, let's see. Let's see what we're doing. Let's see what we're doing. Let's uh, give it a shot. It's already taking an uncomfortably long time to load. <laughs> Is it good? Did it die? Okay, well, <laughs> no, it just took that long. Okay, that's 
That's weird. Okay. And also it probably goes without saying, but don't give them your money and buy this to test it yourself. I have connections and an agent that works for me and, and I have people that help me get games like this for free. So you shouldn't give them money just to test it. This version of the game is laughably terrible and you're about to see why the moment we get out of this pre-rendered cutscene <laughs> that is unskippable no joke yeah i gotta i gotta sit through it okay here we are in the main menu and already jesus <laughs> look at that wow okay yep that's different Ooh, baby oh this is weird yeah, so on steam we could skip the movies but on Switch, it doesn't seem like you can. Yeah. You just have to sit through it. Okay. Oh, dude, it's hitching while playing this. Oh, so this is a, a video, a movie, and it's already hitching just trying to play that. This is going to be rough, man. Okay, now we can skip it. Okay, well, I don't, I don't know what the difference was. Oh, Lord. Look at that aliasing. Okay, there is a good amount of lag as well. <laughs> like a surprising amount that actually makes it kind of difficult to to like control because you put something in and it happens like a quarter of a second after you thought it was going to happen. But like at least my combos are kind of coming out. Oh, their lips don't move when they talk either. Dude, honestly, like, once you get past the input latency, it's not the worst thing ever. It, like, is running at 60 frames. I'll give them that. But barely. <laughs> at what cost, too, right? Like, look at all of this. This is wild. Okay. I mean... Oh God, <laughs> look how much it chugs. Oh, and then these cutscenes have got to be 720p, if that. Like the cutscenes are at a super low resolution too. And there's like screen tear, what is happening? <laughs> I don't, what, the, I see that on my end too. I don't understand. I, I'm baffled. It, it's like trying to load in the next bit. And so right as it finishes it, so you can skip the cutscene. Look how much worse this is. Then it stutters even when playing a video. Like, it's just amazing to me. It is so, so rough. It, it seems a lot less badass. Oh, <laughs> A lot less badass when it's struggling that bad. So this creates like a really interesting debate, which is whether studios should be able to charge the same for games on different types of hardware. In this case, I think it's interesting because it's the same game on the Switch. It's not like they've cut stuff out or in the case of like Baldur's Gate 3, where there's no split screen on Series S. So it's not actually the same game as on other platforms. But in this case, the version that we're playing on Switch is so clearly inferior to every other version. In my mind, it's tantamount to a version of the game that is lacking features because the graphical fidelity of a game is a feature. And if one version of the game looks so terrible and can't even run properly, is it actually the same game at that point or is it something else? I think it's probably something else. I don't think it counts or at least it shouldn't count because clearly it's inferior by a lot. And okay, I, I was initially thinking, you know what, maybe you could play this and it's, it's worth Workable, but after after spending a little bit more time on this man it's it's pretty rough i don't know if i would classify this as playable it's chugging along the delay is seemingly getting worse and it also hurts my eyes so that's also a negative i think okay i'm gonna let him get my health down to like 30 percent so i can come in and try to do the fatal blow look at the ice artifacting on his clothes like there's all sorts of glitches with their clothes and with materials and stuff. It's just really weird. Oh, look at that. Look at that glitch with his clothes. Did you see that? Oh, that was stupid. Okay, I guess I misunderstood what classifies as, as a fatal blow, what I can do. So I guess I'm not doing that. Oh, Lord. 
Oh, man. It makes it really hard to react when the game drops to 24 frames after being at 60 for a minute, you know? Okay, we did the thing. It is you who will regret crossing me. I guess, man. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> Dude! It's so bad. Okay, so it's it's really bad. It's really, really bad. And honestly, the more you look at it and the more you check it out and like look at the side-by-side -side comparisons and finishers and stuff that uh, like, for example, IGN has put together, the more shocking it is. Like aspects of the finishers are just missing. Some characters are supposed to have certain costume elements that just aren't there. It's just actually shocking how terrible it looks. It's not even like mobile game level. It's worse. Because what I think happened, as we've seen with Steam achievements still being in the game on Switch, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, is that this is just the PC port that's been reworked and put onto the Switch. And often video game engines have dynamic settings so that you can get better performance on things like a Steam Deck or a lower end PC versus a higher end PC. And one of the ways they can do that are with LODs or mesh swapping, texture swapping, and things like that. As you can see in this tutorial from Matt Asplund in Unreal Engine 5, showing how you can set different mesh qualities as you get closer or farther away. And this same basic system is used when you change the graphical fidelity settings. Often you'll increase the level of detail at farther ranges if your hardware can handle it, or if it can't handle it, it'll lower it down to the lowest poly version. And of course, the same thing applies to textures, as you can see in this comparison from Gamers Nexus with The Witcher 3, where you can clearly see the low quality setting where the leather work, for example, or the chainmail on his abdomen is just terrible. It's just like vaguely similar to chainmail. Doesn't really look like much of anything though. But when you go to Ultra, all of a sudden it's night and day. You can actually tell that it's chainmail and then you can see the actual like thread going through the leather work right there and on these sides. Whereas on low, you just can't see hardly anything. It's ridiculously bad. <laughs> But these are automated systems that the engines usually do for the developers. It's not like they go in there and hand model or retexture each item for each different level of detail. Usually there's limitations to this scaling put in by the developers, and so they don't let it automatically scale below a certain point. Otherwise, it just looks horrible. But there have been YouTubers that have built videos specifically doing this, such as right here, Danny on PC, where he's done a series called Potato Graphics in Cyberpunk. 2077 where he's gone into the INI files and stuff of the engine and manually tweaked it so the engine scales the graphics below that point where the developers would normally have allowed them to go. What seems to have happened on the Switch version of Mortal Kombat is that they went in and manually changed these scaling options to basically make it look like a potato version of the game. And then they decided to put it out and charge 70 bucks for it, even though it was basically a potato version of the game. Like, laughably, hilariously, terribly bad in comparison. I mean, again, look at this IGN side by side. It's just not even the same game. Like, it, it doesn't even look like the same game. It looks like some ripped off, weird, like the textures aren't even there, dude. <laughs> Like he's a gray mass instead of a scaled lizard monster. Like what? It's just not the same. And this is something where maybe you could say that it's personal preference if you care or not. In that case, her jaw just doesn't even open up on the Switch version. <laughs> like, come on, dude. But I mean, whether or not you think this is a big deal, like, oh, well, you bought it on Switch. It's your problem. It's your fault if you chose to do that. If that's how you feel, okay, I, I can understand that sentiment. However, like, are you seriously going to tell me that this is effectively the same game? I, I don't think it is. I think it's something very different. I don't think they should charge 70 bucks for this. If they charged five, fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, setting aside the fact that it's basically broken and borderline unplayable, if they got it to the point where it at least ran okay on the Switch, then maybe I could see selling it, but it's not the same game as you're getting on Xbox, PlayStation, or PC. So charging the same amount for it, to me, is just ridiculous. Ed Boon has come out and said that they are going to be updating the Switch version. <laughs> they better. But honestly, I think it's just 
too little too late. They've already accepted $70 charges from people to buy this thing who didn't know any better. And now those people are just screwed because the Nintendo refund program is laughably terrible. So I guess the takeaway of this video is that for one, yes, it is actually that bad. People were not overreacting. And secondly, I think we should not tolerate big publishers putting out $70 piles of garbage on the eShop, knowing that it is next to impossible to return stuff on the eShop. Like it is very, very difficult to do. I've actually never gotten a return to work through Nintendo, no matter how bad the game is. And the publishers know that, which is why they put it up at 70 bucks. They get people to buy it and then they get away with it because they're just expecting everybody kind of rolls over and just takes it and accepts that because it's on the switch, it's going to run bad and look bad. So it's your fault if you bought it. But I think that's a really sucky thing to rely on as a publisher is like, <laughs> you were the bigger idiot. You bought it. I think that is just lame and frankly i think nintendo should step up and probably delist this because the only people that are going to be buying it in this condition are people who are misunderstanding the quality state that it is in and at some point i think there is responsibility laid at the feet of those who sell products and services to people to not sell terrible stuff to their customers that frankly don't know better like for example if you went to buy a car from just like a dealership or something and you walked onto the lot and you're looking at all the options and then the salesman comes over and listens to your needs and everything and then points you towards a Ford Pinto. He knows that that car randomly combusts when it gets in basic fender benders. If you don't know what Ford Pintos are, basically they were a hilarious little car that had this design problem where they put the gas tank right behind the bumper. So when you got in basic fender benders, everything would burst into flames. <laughs> it was like a big oopsie. How somebody didn't think of that, I don't know. But you know what? I'm not a car designer, so I, I guess I'm not the per best person to ask, but I think I could have told you that maybe putting that gas tank there was not the best idea. But the point is, if you went to a dealership and they tried to sell you a Ford Pinto, knowing it does that, we would all be in agreement that that seller is an a-hole they tried to screw you over in this case potentially even like kill you but if we just look at it in the context of like they're selling you a thing that they know is broken that they know is terrible they're horrible people like we would all agree that they shouldn't be allowed to sell stuff to the next guy they should get all of the zero star yelp reviews that they could possibly get if that was a thing they should not be rewarded at the very least. Except when it comes to gaming, I guess we're just used to publishers putting out broken crap, selling it to consumers and getting away with it. Just in the last year, we've had all of these games launch totally broken and many of them were not rewarded. Some of them like Forspoken had the studio shut down, Gollum had the studio shut down, or late last year with Saints Row, that studio Volition just got shut down as well. But then there's other examples like Star Wars Jedi Survivor, which whether you enjoy the game or not is not really relevant. I really enjoyed the game myself, but it launched super broken, especially on PC. But in spite of that, it broke all sorts of sales records. They greenlit it for a sequel again. And as far as anybody can tell, it was a financial success. And that's why it keeps happening, because if the brand brand name is big enough, if the IP is big enough, these games can withstand the storm of a bad launch or a buggy release on a certain platform. They can just deal with it and inevitably people will come along and excuse away or justify the crappy state of the port. Even in this comment section, I'm sure you're going to see people that are explaining how, well, it's your fault if you bought it on Switch. I mean, what do you expect? Like, no, you're defending a multi-billion dollar corporation that's screwing over customers. Like, you realize how weird that is? <laughs> Stop it. Like, they're not your friend. They're trying to milk you dry. And you're like, oh, but you should see how gently they milk me in private. It's so stupid. Like... Stop it. They're, this, they're the bad guys, okay? They're the bad guys. This is bad. Oh, gosh. I think I've made my point. I'm going to calm down and, and go play some cyberpunk. So I'm going to stop there. <laughs> Hopefully, 
you at least agree with me that this port is laughably terrible and that they shouldn't release ports like this anymore. And maybe we can all band together and even go so far as to say that Nintendo should perhaps step up and unlist this and refund people that bought it because it is that bad. But with all that said, thank you for watching. I love you all dearly. Thank you for making my dreams a reality every single day. Never think I take it for granted. I really don't. You humble me every single day. This is ridiculous that this is my life. So truly, thank you. But with that said, I'll see you in the next one. Hugs and kisses. Bye-bye.